guys Hi. and welcome back to two chicks going green we are so excited about today's video because we're gonna be showing you guys our veggie gardens <laughs> and we're also gonna be talking about how we made and how we maintain them mm -hmm. we're also gonna be giving you some ideas on how to keep your veggie garden as low waste and as low budget as possible as well as some tips and tricks that we've learned from having our own veggie gardens <music> Having a veggie garden is a great way to produce organic veggies and it helps you form a deeper connection with the food that you eat. Yeah, it really does make you appreciate a little bit more how many resources, how much time and energy goes into growing a single vegetable. Plus, it also limits your food waste since now you're eating the veggies and whatever you're producing whenever it is actually ready to eat, as well as you now have a use for your compost. Yes, but don't be fooled. While we both find that having a veggie garden is extremely rewarding, that doesn't mean it's always rainbows and butterflies. Sometimes it's more like rain and slugs. Maybe snow, that's where you live. Caterpillars. Yeah, that's my issue. <laughs> it's a process and you'll probably fail along the way. So go at your own pace, make sure you're experimenting. That's how I really got mm -hmm. my garden going. I was just like, all right, let's do this thing. <laughs> and base it upon your own personal situation. How you design your garden is highly dependent on where you live. You know, what the weather is like, how much space you have available, if you have a big yard or a small yard, and also what your budget is like, as well as what you kind of hope to get out of it. This is why making a veggie garden isn't one size fits all. No two veggie gardens are alike, and that's kind of also what makes it more fun as well. So today, we will just be speaking from our personal experience and giving you a rundown of the different aspects of gardening to take into account when you're getting started. Or if you're looking for ways to make your garden a little more low waste and low budget moving forward. And as you're probably already aware, there's lots of really detailed videos and information out there specific to whatever you do decide to do. So we recommend that you do your research and have fun with it. Gardening is really ever evolving. No matter how long you've been doing it for, there's always some new trick or hack to try out. I know that we learned some new stuff just from doing our research for this video. Yes, we did. Now for the fun part. Before we get into those gardening tips, we wanna go ahead and give you a little tour of our own gardens so that you guys can see them. And it's spring here in Florida, so our veggies are starting to produce. Welcome to my garden. Here you have the tomatoes, which have completely taken over and I'm okay with. Uh, there's lots of little red cherry tomatoes ready to pick. I have my basil, some lettuces, and my dino kale, which is absolutely delicious. Here I have little baby peppers that are starting to pop up. They're so cute. The rosemary was recently trimmed because it was taken over. There's some mint. I have my parsley, which always does great. This is an experiment I'm running. I'm regrowing the bottom of some celery and some bok choy. It seems to be doing well. These are some cilantros starting to pop up. Some squash. I haven't learned my lesson that zucchini just does not grow here in Florida. It always catches some disease. Over here I have green onions that I must have planted about three years ago and they keep going strong. I just keep cutting them whenever we need some. Some chives and then of course more tomatoes. I've got some lettuce, jalapenos, tomatoes, some herbs like lemon balm and cilantro. I also have lots of arugula and onions growing. And in the big pots, I have a coffee plant that I saved and a banana tree that Tanya gave me. Okay, now that the excitement is over, let's get into that list. First off, think about your space. Whether you have a larger yard and a lot more space to do a lot more with, or if you have a smaller area like Amanda does, but she has some shared green area outside of her apartment, or if you live in an apartment like we used to where you have maybe like a really small little um, patio or just window space. Regardless, always think about what gets the most sunlight. And if you have a bad back or bad knees, like I sometimes do, not that I'm a little older, <laughs> um, think about growing a raised veggie garden kind of like what we did here. Yeah, and as for me, I live in an apartment and it's owned by a landlord. So I had to communicate with them before I built my yeah. garden. And also you want to be careful of the landscapers. Mm. I've had some things cut, which yeah. was really exciting. Or they can spray them too. Or so. spray them, yeah. Um, you can also use pots and 
planters mm -hmm. uh, so that you can transport them if you end up moving, like yeah. I plan to do. And also utilize your inside space. Mm -hmm. If you have windows, you can grow herbs. I always have green basil. onions growing, basil. So make sure you utilize your inside space as well. Can we take a moment to appreciate how beautiful my little tomatoes are doing? I know, there's literally like these, 30 tomatoes right in front of these me. These all grew from no, seeds. No, there's more. From seeds. From seeds. This is why we say it's rewarding. Yes. And it's then your rewarding. caterpillars will eat all your leaves. And no! <laughs> Stop it! No bad juju allowed in the garden. <laughs> now comes making your garden. Make a rough design and plan on where you'll plant what based on the space that you have and sunlight, etc., etc. For the structure, using upcycled materials is best. A lot of people will throw out old wood um, and then they'll also be giving it away on like places like Facebook Marketplace or Letco. Um, really, to them, they'd rather have someone come pick it up than even try to sell it. So you can find a lot of upcycled and recycled materials. Yeah, know when your bulk trash day is and just go walk around. <laughs> we do that. Yeah. <laughs> and whenever people are selling it secondhand, it's usually extremely cheap. There's also places like Habitat that can sell like leftover material from projects where it might be new, but they're selling it for a lot cheaper. So you can do that as well if you don't find anyone nearby that maybe is selling anything or you can't find anything at the time. Um, just make sure that the wood is not treated because that will leach into your veggie garden. For my garden, I found these vinyl pieces being thrown out and I used two by one pieces of wood to anchor the vinyl in place and to hammer the two by ones into the ground. That's so smart. My family, like my brother and my parents, all used scavenged wood that people were throwing out. And you can also make a DIY pallet herb garden, which is something that Amanda and I have both been wanting to do and we want to do it in the near future. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you're interested in checking out that DIY. But if you can't really build anything or you don't want to, you can always use planters or even old drawers. Yeah. I've seen people do that before, which is pretty cool. I've seen people use old dog food bags and they poke <laughs> holes in the bottom of them. Those are really sturdy and big yeah. bags. People donate like big planters too, like yeah. sometimes landscapers have those left over. Right, and just look for things. There are plenty of things to upcycle. Other gardening DIY upcycled ideas are to use leftover pieces of wood or rocks to write what you've planted, use old plastic jugs for watering or for scoopers, and I'm sure there's so much more out there on the internet. Next up is filling your garden with soil. You can go ahead and calculate how much soil you're going to need just based on a simple like volume calculation. And remember that over time, the soil level will drop like it did in mine. And this is only necessary if you're going to be filling a garden or planters or something like that, because sometimes like, for example, I used to live in Pittsburgh and the soil was so nutrient dense and rich that I could just plant my veggies there and they did great. But places like here in Florida, like soil is like sand. sand. It's so bad. <laughs> So you can't do that here and you have to go out and buy all that soil and that's going to be in bags which is super wasteful um, because you can't recycle these and it's also going to be extremely expensive. Yes. So instead you can buy it in bulk at local gardening or bulk plant centers. Places like Home Depot won't offer this. If you have a pickup truck, use a tarp and have them load the back with the soil. If not, bring your own buckets, containers, bags, etc. to refill. This is also usually way cheaper than buying the bags. It costs about $40 per cubic yard. If you have big pots like I do, you can add like old leaves and stuff in your yard that isn't soil so that you can build it up and then have like a foot of soil over top of that. And it will shrink down. Yeah, it'll settle over time. But that's a good way to help you save money on soil and yes. not have to use so much. Yeah. Oh, there's the first red one. I know. That's what I was thinking. Oh, that's new. That's today. Yeah. I was oh, like, that one's the first red. I'm so excited. <laughs> Next up is planting your garden. And there's two main options here. Sprouted plants versus seeds. Regardless, look for non-GMO and organic. I usually buy my seeds from Harris Seeds and will attach that website in the description below. There's pros and cons to both. It's easier to buy already sprouted, of course, but in my experience, this means that they can also have a disease with them, which will then spread to your other veggies. And this happened to me last year, and it was really sad to watch some of my other veggies that were growing and healthy suddenly just start to die. It's also harder to find them organic and non-GMO if they're already sprouted. 
If you are planting from seeds, make sure that you do pay attention to the instructions for growing those. For example, how deep down you need to plant them, how far apart, what the spacing is, sunlight, watering, all of that, because that will ensure that your veggies do well. Also, you can go ahead and sprout them in a controlled environment and then transplant them into the ground. And there's a few different ways to do this where they will do best. I'm really lazy and I don't do this. I just plant them in the garden. Um, so sometimes I haven't been very successful with some types of right. plants because of this. Yeah, and sometimes those instructions and that terminology they use can be a little bit like, what does that mean? Yeah, it's a little confusing at first. <laughs> at first, so make sure you look up those words if you don't know what they mean. There are so many ideas out there for DIY seedling starters. You can make upcycled containers from free stuff you can find on Trash Day. Some seed starting ideas we love are using an eggshell, toilet paper rolls, banana peels. And the idea behind these DIYs is to not disturb the root ball of the plant. What? Root ball? <laughs> so the root ball are basically the roots of the plant and when they're baby little seedlings, when you move around that root ball too much, when you transplant it, it can lead to the little plant not making it. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of knew what that was, I just yes. didn't know yes. the name. <laughs> root ball. It's a weird one. Also, if you do buy your veggies already sprouted and they're in little pots, Make sure you take them to a local gardening center because they will recycle them and repurpose them yeah. instead of just throwing them out on the trash. Yeah. I have recycled them, but it's still better to do that. Yeah. Next up is what veggies to grow. This is completely up to you, but it does depend highly on what your climate is like and what season you are planting in. For example, here in Florida, not all veggies do well. Like squash. Yeah. Some of my personal favorite plants to grow here are herbs like basil and parsley. They do really well. And then tomatoes and green onions and kale. Some of my favorites are arugula. It grows like a weed for me. And I even harvested the seeds last year and they did super well this year. And I'm usually successful with peppers. Something that I find really interesting is learning about permaculture, if you haven't learned about this, and different ways of growing veggies where you're using your space a little bit more efficiently. I'm not an expert on this. There's lots of videos online. Um, I have one channel that I really love following, and I will put the link below. But really the idea behind it is to be a little bit smarter in the way that you grow. For example, I plant my lettuces underneath my tomatoes because they don't really need a lot of sunlight. Something else that you can do if you do have a little bit of land is to plant stuff like pineapple tops. So once you've eaten the pineapple, you can just plant the tops and then voila, two years later, you'll start getting a little pineapple, which takes about nine months. It's like a baby, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> and they're so cute. And I have a whole little pineapple plantation right now that has little pineapples growing on them, which is adorable. And then they'll produce pops and then you have even more. So I'm not, I won't get into it. I'm very excited about the pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. Another really easy veggie scrap idea is to plant sweet potato and potato pieces that have started to sprout already. Even like things grow out of our compost mm -hmm. all the time. Like yeah. avocados, mangoes. Yep. I know I feel like beans sprout out of mine, but really? I don't know what they are. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> people. I love doing green onions mm -hmm. in my house. If you buy them and they already have the little roots. Yeah, exactly. Green, you know, I put them in some water and they yep. just shoot right back up. So basically that little white bottom part, I plant mm -hmm. mine. I just planted some yesterday. Really? They're awesome. And you never have to buy them again if you plant them. Also, as you get more into this, you're going to want to start to write down dates, like when you plant your seedlings, yeah. so you know when they sprout, so you mm -hmm. know when it's time for a new season. Yeah. And you can kind of start to plan your whole year yeah yeah it's really cool what you can do once you really get into this next up is watering there's so many options but the best is try to collect rainwater. make sure you put a cap on it so that you don't get mosquito worms in there sprinkler systems on timers are also an option of course you can also just water it yourself with a hose usually in the morning or in the evening yes. is the best time of the day to do this because once the sun hits the plants it just evaporates and it's actually worse for your plants yeah if you do have indoor plants try to recycle your water like if you just made pasta use the extra water when you strain it just make sure there's no salt in there yeah all the starch in that pasta water is actually really good for the vegetable right Speaking of water, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this video, Epic Water Filters, which makes all sorts of reusable water filters that can be used to prevent the need to buy any sort of plastic packaged water and filter out over 99% of all contaminants found in typical tap water and in rivers. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video and make sure to check them out at epicwaterfilters.com and use our discount code 
do check on green. That's with the number two at the front of that for 20% off of your whole purchase. I started using my Epic water filter at work in the water fountain, mm -hmm. and the water fountain usually has this like bleach type of taste, mm -hmm. and I don't taste right. it at all. So they are amazing. I love mm -hmm. them. I don't have to carry around like a gallon of, jo of yeah. water <laughs> to work anymore, <laughs> which is great. Yeah, and I did a whole video on them as well on their filtering water bottles, so make sure you check that video out if you're interested. Next up is keeping pests away. And this is a really important one and there's just so many options out there because it really depends on your personal situation and what you have attacking your plants. Yeah, there's a lot of pests too. Yes. <laughs> For example, I had to build a cage, as you can see, because the iguanas are just so bad by me, they will eat anything. But for smaller insects, there's some other solutions. For example, you can plant marigolds on the outside and they deter bad pests. You can use upcycled materials to build scarecrows yeah. and make your own sprays out yes. of uh, like hot sauce and mm -hmm. garlic like we do. Yeah. So just do your research on this one and get creative. One thing that we've done in the past is use just dish soap and water to like wipe the leaves off. Yeah, that gets rid of the little mites. And exactly. Stuff, right? yeah. Next up is composting and nutrition for your plants. Again, there's so many different ways to do this. If you have a compost bin, you can use that compost. That's what I do. And make sure to check out our video on this. We have all sorts of great information, tips and tricks in that video. Also, if you live in a colder environment, consider getting some natural mulch. Usually you can find it for free from landscapers or from a local farm. Another thing that I recently learned is that you can take weeds that you have pulled out of your veggie gardens and they have a second use. You can make kind of like a water mixture with them. You leave them soaking for two weeks, which is gonna be disgusting. But then you drain the water out and you pour that over your veggies and apparently that has so much nutrition to it. So I'm going to try this out in the next couple weeks. That's awesome. And this actually brings us to maintaining your yes. garden. If you want a healthy, organic, chemical free garden which you definitely should want that very important it's really important to weed every single week or mm -hmm. else it's gonna get out of control you also need to prune your veggies and you also yeah. need to make sure you're picking them and eating them at the right time we both have this thing where we're <laughs> like it'll just we keep feel growing <laughs> and it takes so long for yeah. them to grow yeah. so you like almost don't want to eat them it won't keep growing forever you need to eat it yes. so and like Amanda said, if you weed, you can weed once or twice a week. That also is going to save your plants from like having the nutrition taken out of the soil. Also, if you plant like at different times, like I do sometimes, you won't be able to tell the difference between little weeds and your little veggies that are sprouting yes. up. So it's really important that you really keep the weeds down if you want to make it organic. On that note, that is about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, please, please, please hit that like button. We appreciate every single like. Um, we also have a Kofi page if you'd like to donate on there if you really loved us today. <laughs> um, and comment below. We would love to hear about your veggie garden, what you grow, what your favorite stuff to grow is, and if you're going to be starting one, maybe what your favorite tip was from this video. Yeah, or if you have tips for us, we love hearing your feedback. We yeah. love the conversations we do. that go on. We do. So definitely make some comments. Mm -hmm. And also we have all of the articles and resources in the description below if you want to check any of that stuff out. And if you check out our channel, we have so many other videos on here about living sustainably. We have product reviews, mm -hmm. eco-friendly living tips and tricks. Eco challenges, eco gift ideas. Yeah, lots of stuff on there, mm -hmm. so make sure you check it out. Yep, and we hope to see you on the next one. Yep, thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.